everybody, it's Teresa. So I'm doing a live pour today. Give me just a few minutes to finish getting set up. I'm trying to make sure I've got the right angle for you to be able to see this. Um, I don't normally work with gloves. I always struggle with them, but I'm gonna work with gloves today and see if I can keep from making such a mess. This is a four foot by three foot. It's part of a commission that I'm doing. I'm gonna wait a few minutes. I'm gonna gather a few more things while people get on. I've got a couple people that we're gonna to watch today at noon. So I will go over some of the basics before I start pouring and then get, get started. reposition the camera. So, I don't know how that'll work, but we'll see. Okay, so this is the large, let's see if I can tip it up. This is the large four foot by three foot that I did last time. It took an entire week to dry before I could stand it up. Um, I started with putting gold all over the bottom as a base layer so that the paint would move uh, around this canvas. When you have such a large canvas like this, you have to have, or at least I feel you have to have a base layer in order to help your paints move. Uh, these are the two side pieces. The customer is gonna be tipping this um, horizontally to go over his bed. And then these two smaller pieces are gonna go on either side of his TV. So for those of you that may be watching that do not know me, I am Teresa Robertson. My class is called Playing with Paint. We also have a vacation rental cabin in Boone, North Carolina. And I'm also a local realtor here in Jacksonville and Orange Park, Florida, as well as St. Augustine, Callahan, the surrounding area. But uh, my main classes are out at Atlantic Beach Arts Market. Let me see if you can see that with the glare. Um, Atlantic Beach Arts Market, which is right off of Mayport, um, just under a mile on the right, if you're, you know, once you turn off, um, onto Mayport, it's a blue building, and we can fit 12. We thought we were gonna do 14 in the class, but that just takes up too much of their parking space. So we're going with 12 in each class, and that seems to be perfect, actually. So we have a waiting list right now that I understand. Uh, three classes have sold out. One class for April 7th, only had three tickets as of yesterday morning. I haven't checked it today. So I'll have to check it again and see what's going on. But we are back to this canvas here. And it's hot as heck in my sunroom. Whew. I can't turn the fan off, I mean on, because it will dry the paint faster than I want it to. So when uh, here's a little tip for you. You guys, when you get your canvas, save this cardboard. Uh, because what you can do is break it down into smaller pieces and they become corner and side catchers so that you don't lose all of your paint. So for this one, um, I'll probably just tear this one here at the bend that's already there and then leave the other piece large because I don't know how much paint I'm going to try to save on this one. Um, this has so much color on it, I'll just tell everybody right now, I may not like it at all. I might be ditching the entire thing. Um, I don't normally work with red. Um, I find that red is fairly difficult to work with, especially when it starts becoming pink and your client does not want pink. He doesn't mind pink, it's just a matter that his living room has a lot of red in it. And the sample that I did for him, he was specific um, that he didn't want pink in that living room because of all the red in the living room. So today's colors are, put down on the canvas here so you can see them. This, let's see if I can get this one closer. This may not show up on camera. Yeah, it does. Okay, so there's a little iridescence, there's a, a or pearlescence that's in there. This is called color shift paint, and this is the blue flash. And they are currently sold out all around town right now. This is the number one color in my class. Um, 
February 16th. That was the one that, that people just went crazy for. So I'm doing a dioxazine purple, plenty of white. This is an ultramarine blue. I have a pearl that I've mixed up. I have a deep red that I've mixed up. It is kind of pink looking right now, but once you mix uh, your um, Floetrol in with them, they do lighten up a little bit. So you just have to uh, pray that it dries dark like it should. But um, as you're doing this, make sure that you remix your paints as you go. I found a little blob here, so I'm trying to take care of that real quick. I um, also have an aquamarine blue, which I mix with an aquamarine metallic. So it should have a little bit of a sheen to it. So we'll have, we'll have two colors of the sheen. Um, this should be, let me see, yep, this is phthalo blue, black, and yellow. You're going to be using very minimal black, very minimal yellow because they tend to take everything over. Um, the last canvas, what I did was I used this um, gold that I got that I really did not like. I bought um, Artist Loft, and I like Artist Loft black and white. I do not like Artist Loft Gold, it is too yellow. But because I have such a large space, I wanna make sure that my entire surface is wet um, before I start pouring. So I'm gonna use this only on the edges. I did a couple of tests this morning, um, and when I tested, I, unfortunately I poured this over the entire eight by 10 canvas, which is you know not bad, but uh, too much of the gold got into the actual painting and really all I want is a base layer to help my paints flow over the edges so that I have nice pretty edges so the customer does not have to frame this. That's one of the really great things about this type of art is if you are careful with your edges and you make that beautiful design flow over each one of the sides, which is a trick, um, you will not have to frame this. So yes, the canvas is 60 bucks. Yes, the paint is, you know, 30 bucks if you only paint one time. Um, but you're not buying a $200 frame to go around it either, or a hundred something kind of dollar frame. So if you work it right, um, you know, and use all the coupons that you can get from, from Michaels.com and Hobby Lobby and Joann's, you can really, you can do one of these canvases for under a hundred bucks including all of your other supplies that you need. Um, of course, I've been doing this almost a year now. Next month will be, in, in April will be a year that I've been doing this. So a lot of these supplies I already have on hand. Um, so it does make it a little bit cheaper, but um, it is also hard to price your work because uh, the customer doesn't always know how much work goes into it. Um, I was talking to, and I've said this on one of my other videos, so you've probably already heard this if you've watched my videos before, but um, one of the girls in the Facebook group mentioned that she was at an art show, and someone said to her, oh, that's just throwing paint on a canvas. Well, um, you know, some of them do look like you just threw paint on a canvas, so if that's what her artwork looked like, well, then maybe she just needs to work a little bit more on her art. But you know what, if your mom taught you anything, it should be that if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. So um, it's not just throwing paint on a canvas, it's not just finger painting, um, as one of my friend likes to say. Um, thank God I love him dearly. But um, it is a matter of technique. Um, I myself do not like all acrylic pouring. I don't like all the work I do. I do a lot of uh, work that I just don't care for and I end up painting over it. That's, that's really one of the bonuses of this type of artwork is um, you can paint right over your work. And as long as there aren't um, a lot of bumps and bubbles in your work due to, like right here I've got, I'm going to get these out before, uh, before I pour, is I see a couple of uh, paint blobs that have dried inside the cup and you just have to get those out. Um, or they'll dry in your paint as the um, water comes out of this paint. They will dry and they will show up the bumps and bubbles. But uh, like I said, the, one of the best things about this type of artwork is if you hate it, let it dry. 
two reasons for that. Um, number one, when you let your artwork sit for a little bit, some of the paints actually have um, a chemical reaction and they will actually change. Sometimes bubbles will form. Um, sometimes dendrites will form. If you go look up dendrites, maybe I'm saying that incorrectly, but it is a chemical reaction that happens um, between some of the paints and it forms these neat little tree looking things. Um, so sometimes your work will actually improve with sitting. Um, this paint right here is a great example of that. It is, even though I don't like the gold, it has these neat little bubbles in it. Um, because I believe it's because of the metallics. I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe it's because of, of the metallics that are in them. Uh, and it does affect the other paint. So if you just let your paint sit, at minimum, let it sit, you know, a good 45 minutes, see what happens. Um, once you see what happens, if you think it's okay, um, leave it alone. If you absolutely hate it, if it's muddy, go rinse it off. Just go get rid of it. Go rinse it off. Let your canvas dry for about a week and repaint over it, okay? If it's muddy, there's nothing you can do about it. I see people ask about it all the time. Um, you know, when they've mixed black and orange or sometimes if you put too many colors in a large cup on a, and then dump it on a small canvas, that's too much movement. Um, a lot of times when I'm pouring, I try to pour into the cup down only the side of the cup because I want it to go in the cup as gently as possible. And that is because, it, think about the ocean. When you, uh, when you play in the ocean or you know, when you are watching waves in the ocean, when that top wave comes over, it churns up underneath. And that's exactly what happens with the paint. The higher you pour from one source into your cup, the more churning happens. The more that paint churns in there, um, and then you pour it high on your canvas, there's more churning that happens um, on the canvas. So you, you start out with mud. Um, so the more gentle you can put it in your cup, just let it slide down the side of your cup, uh, the better that your colors will come out. They'll be more vibrant and then you'll have time to play with them on the canvas and change them. You can still make them muddy once they get to the canvas, but um, give yourself a good head start by just being really gentle when you pour into your cup. Now, that being said, there are some designs where you do just kind of pour from high in your cup. But if you do pour high into your cup to get that churning, pour really low near your canvas so it minimizes the churn um, once you get it to the canvas. If you're having trouble with your paints, I tell people all the time to call me. I leave my phone number all over and they don't call and I see their subsequent pictures and they're still a hot mess. Um, it's typically just a few things. Their paint is too thick, their paint is too thin, they're doing what I just told you, which was pouring too high into their, their cup that they're making their layers on, um, or they're just, they're not layering the proper colors. If you're going to mix, let's say, red and black, you want red and black on your canvas, you are better to put a tiny, tiny layer of white in between because um, those will end up uh, getting a little muddy if you're not careful. Same thing with orange, orange and black. Put a very, very thin layer. You can even water down the white layer more than you normally would um, just to give a little layer in between so that there's less, less, mix, excuse me, less mixing and less churning of the paint. So let's see how many people we got. All right, we got a few people. Hey, Greg. So, um, Greg, let me know if you need any artwork for any of your listings. I see your listing like crazy. You've got some beautiful homes you're listing. I've got one in April coming. I can't wait. I'm hoping to do something for her place. Uh, I gotta get started though, but she's painting. So I wanna see what color she's painting and then, then we'll put something up hopefully. 
All right, so I've got that down. Let me put some white down. And then we'll get started with the actual puddles. So let's see. Got a class tomorrow in Green, uh, Green, what am I? Green Cove. That I'm excited about because there's not really a huge um, amount of stores that have classes out there. So um, this will kind of be a first. We get something started out there. And you know, the Clay Theater was purchased by Valancourt Construction. Uh, that's going to be an events and meeting place. I wouldn't mind talking with them. You know, maybe we can get something going or something going, especially um, in the very beginning. You know, when they're getting a lot of publicity when they open, they're, they're doing a lot of work on it right now. I, said, I think they took the barriers down a couple of days ago. Um, okay, so I did a test yesterday. Um, I did a test the day before and I did another secondary test this morning. What I learned was, and I'm pour, I am pouring different than the large beachy one that I did. I'm puddle pouring with this one. Um, which is literally just pouring in puddles, layer of color after layer of color, and then I will tip. But what I learned was, on that smaller canvas, I was making too many puddles, and then I didn't have enough negative space. And I want enough negative space so that when I start pouring the puddles, they stretch, and I don't have this big jumble of colors. I want some color, some white or negative space, some more color, um, movement, but I just don't want a whole canvas of a ton of colors. That sometimes is just too much. So, anyways, let's see. So, I think I'm going to go with maybe three, three big puddles because five was too small on an eight by ten, which is about like this. It just overwhelmed it. So, I think I might go with one, two, three. I'll fill the center with more white. And then because this is gonna get heavier with three liters of paint by the time I'm done with it, it will start to push down in the center and they will naturally come towards the center. So with more white here, you'll see those puddles kind of come in and then I'll start tipping it off the sides. And I think I'm gonna need more white too. I really want this paint to move when when the time comes because I don't want any of this particular gold showing up. This is not my favorite. So, start out. And guys, remember this could be a hot mess. I'm a little scared um, because there, the volume of paint that's involved, the cost, uh, the amount of colors that I'm using. It is a little terrifying. All right, so that is my favorite, phthalo blue. It's very reactive with the white, and it is one of the reasons why I put it against that white, um, because I wanna see the reaction that happens with it. Let's see. I'm gonna add white right in the middle of those. Look at that, gosh just my favorite. I will probably do one of these for my bedroom and I think it's just going to be white and this phthalo blue probably stretched very long and wispy. Okay, so now some of the colors I will put in the puddles and some I will not put in the puddles because I don't want this so symmetrical that it looks the same everywhere. I want to see something different when I look around. So I will put some purple here, some purple here, and then I'll wait to the end to see if I need more. What I don't want is, I don't want yellow ending up on top because it looked like a fried egg in one of the, see? 
it looked like a fried egg and um, or a runny egg I should say and it, it just was not the look I was going for so let's try yellow and black always looks pretty awesome together let's see let's put, we'll put the yellow on the opposite corners now because I want to put green on top of that yellow I'm going to go ahead and add more white because I don't want it making blue. Okay, this has a little bit of metallic in it. I will have to add black to this corner over here because the color is so strong here in these three and it's not as strong there. So while I don't want a balance of all the same colors, I do want a, I want to be careful of my strength so that one corner does not look weak. And I added red over that white. That might be a mistake. We will see. Now I'm moving on to um, this is the flash flash color. It has the iridescence in it, which look should look nice against this purple. It actually should look nice against most of the colors. This is terrifying. This is very, very colorful. I, t I typically like to do colorful. I just don't like to do, uh, I don't know. I think I like colors that are more of that beachy, beachy vibe. Um, or the blues with the coppers. I like to do, I guess, less primary colors, really. These are very primary. So, let's see, we've got yellow and yellow. It looks like I need something in each one of those. Let's go with more white here. I'm gonna use the rest of that bottle. There's this one. Got a lot of yellow in that one. It kind of scares me. Okay. Let's go ahead and put And I put red on that white again. That might be a mistake. We shall find out. I see how things are kind of tipping into the center here. Okay. And put black in this one. A little bit of black. I want to give it some strong color up in that corner because I have it down here. This is Pearl. Um, I, I use this by itself and I also use it um, mixed into other paints that aren't as pretty. It kind of helps give it a little bit of a pretty color. And it's not pouring out of this cup very well because I, I needed a small cup, but I needed one a little bit bigger than what I had. So I ended up cutting a cup and it's making a hot mess. Okay, let's see. I definitely need more white down here. It's starting to dry. So this is what I call rivering when, um, when I put this nice heavy path in between these circles. Um, because I always want that river to be there. I want that, uh, I want the visual difference to show up. And I think it just uh, makes the overall composition look better. I got these at Sally's Beauty Supply. They are wonderful, especially if you want to change up your composition a little bit. I run them up underneath the paint in order to get some of the webbing which I'm going to be doing, let's see, we'll try it on this middle one. You just push it up underneath the paint and squish, and you just let it sit. Squish, squish, and 
the reason I'm doing that is it's it's actually forming a design, not just the little heart design that I'm doing by pushing along after making the circle, but it's forming uh, webbing up underneath the paint so that it will become um, part of the design. is not to suck your paint back up in your bottle. It will affect everything else that you do after that. Okay. So make sure to squeeze some of that out. Make sure I don't have that color there. This trick is also great if you have colors that are sinking and you want them to show up you essentially are pushing along and shoving some of those under layers up so that it, so they end up showing up. So I had some purple here that was starting to, to go away. And by doing this, it's actually uh, pushing the layers up just a little bit. You know, if you just kind of push your color, your white color into the layer that you want to see more of. Okay, so. Now, I'm gonna to have to add a lot of white around this, the edges here in order to get this to really move. And um, this becomes the most, probably about the most expensive part of what you're doing, the highest volume of paint. Because I want the paint to move easily towards the corners, I really want a lot of paint around the puddles. Uh, we want it just to kind of skate off. You just want to hear it dripping off, which, you know, kills you, but it's part of what you're doing. It's trying to make sure that your design moves. So, I'm going to let the rest of this come out. And I'll probably have to put another liter or so to really get this to move. So what I'm going to do is take the bottle that I've already used. I've mixed water and a little bit of Floetrol pouring medium, and it's what I use to um, thin out some of the other paints besides just plain water. And I put that inside the bottles that, um, that are empty as a rinse out. So just mix a little bit of that in there. Get all the paint off the walls of your bottle. Add in some more of your paint that's already been pre-mixed because I want this to be thinner. Um, the stuff that goes out over the edges, I want it to be real thin. I just want it to make a path for the paint to go off the canvas. Here's another reason why I hate using gloves. They get caught up when I'm trying to twist the lids back on. So this is super thin paint right here. very bubbly. So I'm going to mix just a little bit more and then we'll start tipping. Let's see how many people we have right now. These get so long I know that I tend to lose people. Greg and Jill. Hey Jill. So I'm going to mix another 16 ounce bottle of paint real quick. Again, I'm making it very, very thin because I'm keeping in mind that I just want this to run off the canvas. This is only to make the paint flow the best. So it's going to be much thinner than my standard everyday white paint. By the time I'm done, I might have to add more red. Unless when I stretch it, the red starts moving. Okay. That might actually might not be thin enough. I'm going to make it a little thinner. Thin 
that you'll like that you mark your bottles. Which one? Which ones are thin? Or you might ruin a whole canvas. Ask me how I know that. Um, thank goodness it was a small test canvas, but still. The sheer fact that you're wasting paint will piss you off. Okay. So while this sits for just a minute, I'm going to go get the torch because with all the bubbles that I just created by mixing that paint, um, I've created a little problem. And let's see. I think I'm going to make some more paint in the squeeze bottle because I can see what I'm losing on my rivers. And while I'm tipping and tilting, I want to be able to fill up those rivers with paint. So I'm going to say that I have probably gone through, I don't think I'll use three liters on this one. I think I wasted a lot of paint in that last one, um, just simply because I was trying to smooth out some of the, um, some of the between these two. And it should become apparent when I start tipping these why. It just, it usually makes for a better image. All right, I'll be right back. Let me go grab the torch. We'll torch the bubbles and then we'll start tipping. torch that I bought at Home Depot. You can use a creme brulee torch, um, but I am um, cheap, maybe with the right word, I don't know. And the creme brulee torch was way more expensive than this. And I figured I could use this torch for more things, so I went ahead and bought this. And you can do the refills. So I start with a high, high torch to begin with, meaning a long flame. I'm holding it parallel to the paint, not, not putting it in the paint, only holding it parallel. All I want to do is pop bubbles. I'm not trying to create any designs. I do that with a much lower flame. And again, that's all you're doing. You want almost parallel with the paint. You are just warming the bubbles to pop them. If you do any more than that, you will either burn your paint, um, or you'll make some maybe designs that you didn't want. And um, I, I really am not a huge fan of some of the designs where you are burning, uh, burning some of the paint. So I've got plenty of paint left over that I can add. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna add right here before we pour. Add some here. In here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to it so that it's not so stark. But I do want this red in there because red is part of his living room. These look like kidneys, so I've got to get rid of those. Who wants kidneys in their picture? Not me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white to that. There we go. Got some of the webbing coming up there. A little bit of white. White. A little bit. All right. Make sure to get the white out of your, get the colors out of your tip there. All right, let's start. I'm actually picking up paint from the other pour on my feet and put my shoes back on. So the key to doing this is to not have to move this too much. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide everything 
I'm going to start with sliding everything that way and then this way. And then we'll move left and right depending on what, what it needs. But the whole idea is as you're moving this way is to try to cover what you need as you go. And then when you tip from that way, you try to cover down this side. So we'll actually be kind of more tipping towards that corner and then swooping the paint back to go over the edge. So I'm going to get the paint in the center for right now. I can tell it's very thick. I'm going to need more white. And, you know, partly it's starting to dry over there, too. So, so get your paint back to the center because it's kind of moved over to the right. It's apparently not level in here. Okay. Now, we're going to start moving. I said the wrong corner, actually, because I've decided that it looks like the paint really needs to go to this left corner first. There's tons of paint running over the edges. Okay, so put it down. Now the goal is to stretch this to the next corner. There's enough paint on here that we should be stretching just fine. The problem I'm going to have is the cups that these are sitting on. Now, let me go check the other end first. I want everything covered. So if that means I have to come down here and pat some of these corners, which it typically does. Let's put, got a lot of red, so let's go ahead and tip red over these corners. And I do not want all my corners to be red. I just want some so that as we stretch that out, we get the colors that the client wants. Okay, so this whole edge is covered here. Let me check this side. This whole side is covered. I'm gonna pat a little bit of that in the corner there. Okay, so we've got coverage there. Now, the goal is now to cover this edge, and then tip everything back to the center, and then tip over the edge there. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this quite yet, so um, give me your comments, let me know. Ah, okay, that's gonna ruin it. If I don't hurry up, I'm gonna fix it. This is the problem of not having your helper here with you. My helper is in school today. Which is where he should be. Okay, so. A lot of people that do these big pours use um, step stools or step stools. Okay, so now. I do have the majority of that covered. I'm gonna put this down and let it sit for a minute because I wanna look at it. So I'm gonna do what I said, come back to the middle with as much paint as possible and then stretch straight down to the other end. Okay. Because I can add white to the sides but what I want to do is get as much of the weight in the middle so that when these blues start heading down the canvas, they stretch out and, and cover it, but they also look wispy and create a third color, you know, a color that I didn't actually put on there, but a color that's created because of the stretching. This will probably take 30 minutes. So if you guys wanna come check back with me, totally get it. 
Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. I'm getting ready to lose that cup. I can feel it. Put it down real quick. Make sure you keep your hands up. And you get a bunch of paint on your hands. Um, and put your hands over your canvas. You will unfortunately drip on your own canvas. Okay. Now I'm filling in some of these holes here with white that's on the ground. Number one, it's colorful. Number two, I want to help this paint get off the canvas. There's a blob. Get rid of the blob. Okay. So just pat this paint down here. It's getting ready to go over the edge, but sometimes you have a thicker paint that ends up forming a hump. And if you just pat that down, it will help it um, so much. Okay, so we're gonna work on this corner right here. Paint is all heading towards this corner. And hopefully it will help stretch out some of these horrible looking mountains we have right now. So let me see if I can squish off this gold I have on my hands. Alrighty. If you're hanging in there with me, I appreciate it. I really do. It is so hot in this room. For those of you that are watching that are not in Florida, if you're somewhere cooler, send me some cool air. And I'm having a hard time grabbing this without ruining the colors on the edge. So I'm actually going to have to mess up the edge. I lost my cup too. Now this is going to take a lot of stretching to get the colors down there in that corner. I think I could have used more paint for sure. Or thinner paint. I'm actually just tipping this on its own corner right now. over the corner. All right, so we're over the corner now. I'm going for being over the end there. I want the colors to go over the end and stretch out. And I just stepped in a gob of paint. Good job. So I want some of these little mountains that I've created to smooth out. So I'm just letting this stretch and I'm going to go up for this other corner as it stretches. Sorry if you don't have a very good camera angle for you. But what I'm going to do is get this back up on its cups as quickly as possible. I'm actually sticking to this um, plastic. I have sweat running in my eyes, which is lovely. And I have gloves on my hands, so I can't wipe it. Um, all right, so we're going to let this sit a minute while I change gloves. This is why I hate working with gloves. All righty. And then I think I'm going to restretch some of it. So that the metal kind of settles down. Um, I think I'm just going to pick it up from the top here. Actually, I can 
can see this end needs more white. So let's get some, make some more. I will say I did not make enough white this time. I have a, a large bottle mix, but I should probably have um, at least 32 ounces of a thinner mix prepared. Um, that needs water, let's see. Just because um, I didn't use as much color, so, and I think that's why I didn't use the full three liters. So if I think if I would have used more color in the petals, I wouldn't have needed as much white. So we're just gonna go here with the white and get this filled in. Because there's so much color here at the end, I don't wanna mess up some of those designs, so I'm gonna just leave it wispy in hopes that it will drain this color down towards this corner. The other problem with this corner is I didn't notice it when I picked it up from the craft store that um, it was a little bit damaged. So I want to make sure that when I'm done I go back and pat a thicker layer of paint over that corner. Same thing with this one. I'm going to put a little bit of white down the seam there. All of my other edges look covered. So I'm going to start tipping it again. Um, up close, um, it actually looks a little bit neater than standing further away because you can see a lot of the mix that happened up underneath the paint in between the white and the blue. All right, so that corner is starting to tip off a little bit of the paint. And if I'm patient, which it's not, not my middle name for sure, some of these little jagged shapes might straighten out. I do want a little bit more color in that corner without ruining the color here. Make sure that when you're done with your canvas that you run your finger along the edge of these canvases, remove some of the extra paint and it also smooths out the color on the back. Okay. All right, so I have moved some of the paint down towards that corner. Let's go check it. Remember, keep your fingers lifted up so the paint doesn't drip into your work. Um, I think I will go tip back towards this end. It is not my favorite. I will be honest, it is not my favorite. But again, I don't, I don't care for working with wood. And that's kind of the hard part with a commission. Um, you, you, you know, you're trying to achieve something that the customer wants, whereas if you would have done this for yourself or just, you know, for something that you were trying and the customer loved it, that's so much easier. It's less. It's actually a lot less stressful than trying to accommodate uh, something that they would like. So um, I don't know how many more commissions I will do. Um, of course, you know, you have to be asked, but I don't know that I'm, I'm looking for any, let's put it that way. Um, I really like just painting, and if somebody likes it, they can choose it, and if not, we can move on. That's really the way I feel about all art. If you don't like it, don't say anything about it. Just move on. Um, I've never been somebody that's been in love with abstract art. Um, I just found that I enjoyed doing it. Um, I started doing it for the cabin to make a blue painting for the cabin because we had so much brown in the cabin. And I kept looking at local artists and seeing how expensive their work was and while it was gorgeous, you know, I didn't have 600 to to $1,000 to spend on one piece of artwork uh, for a place that, you know, many people come into and I didn't know what they're gonna do with it. Thank goodness people typically take care of our cabin. 
um, and they're typically very kind to it. But, you know, it just takes one kid to scribble all over it or something. So I thought, you know, why don't I do something that I can do? And um, I, I've learned a lot, and I'm actually teaching classes. So not only have I come away with uh, eventually some art for the cabin, um, an extra income source, um, as well as fun. So anyways, thanks for watching. Again, not my favorite, so comment away. It will not break my heart. Um, I think it will change and shift. Um, I can already see some changes happening here in the green. Not sure if I like that. Um, so we'll see. And I'm not a fan of jagged, of the jagged stuff. So I like it much smoother. So I think next time I would do bigger puddles with more paint and then make sure that I have plenty of white paint layered down on the canvas. So thanks for watching and catch y'all next time.